I think little about this creature, and I must apologize. The last time you came to us, I don't think there was any audio. You couldn't hear us talking, so I do apologize for that. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but there we have the same, very same, uh, well, now with his head up, I suppose, water monitor. Now, we had this thing two days ago on a branch not too far from where he's sitting now. So this is his won't, obviously. This is where he likes to be. And I wonder if it isn't the same chap that sometimes heads all the way up Twin Dams. Look at his tongue sticking out. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I wonder if he spotted something he's going to try and catch. because there is a water monitor that walks from here all the way up Twin Dams Road to Juma Dam quite regularly, and you find his tracks going. And this is a big water monitor. I'd say he's at least four feet long. Isn't he wonderful? I wonder if he spotted a bird or something he'd like to eat. They're almost exclusively carnivorous, I think. Powerful legs, a big slapping tail. <laughs> James Richard, yes, very droll. You say this water monitor is quite the tree hugger. He certainly is. He does a lot of tree hugging. And now he's doing a bit of climbing as well. Come on, up you go. Oh, he looks like he's doing this in a sort of painful and slow way. But he isn't. He'll shoot up that tree faster than you and I could come down it. And I wonder if it isn't because he's either found something that he wants to have a go at a little bit further up, or perhaps that's just a slightly more comfortable position. How it could be, I'm not sure. But he's got his blackish back to the sun to absorb some heat before he heads back into the chilly water. He's sitting in what is probably the very coldest spot on Juma. So that is the lowest point, pretty much where that tree's growing, uh, the lowest point on Juma. Well, no, that's not true. That's one just slightly lower in the drainage line, just to behind him, basically. But that's pretty much the lowest. And so he lives in a fairly chilly spot. And that, I would say that it's probably at least five or six degrees Celsius colder in this area than it is in the other parts of the world. Now, Forrest, you want to know if we get Komodo dragons here because this chap looks like one. He does look like one, and he's not actually that distantly related to a Komodo dragon. Um, but he isn't a Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons are found only, ironically, on the island of Komodo. And that is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the Indonesian archipelago. And they, the, And, I mean, those things forest are at least probably six or seven times the size of this. I mean, this chap is four feet long if you stretch him all the way out, but you'll find Komodo dragons are probably at least six and a half feet long from tip to tail, and they're much, much wider and much heavier. So I would put his weight at probably about 10 kilos or so. No, maybe a bit more. Maybe 15 kilos, or maybe 40 pounds. And I think you'll find Komodo dragon substantially heavier than that. Yes, that's what I said. You can see him looking at me. Now, will you say, does anything hunt these lizards? And the answer is quite a lot, actually. Leopards will eat them. Certainly, especially young leopards. We've seen Hosanna and Shongila, our two young leopard friends, 15 months old now. Uh, that was yesterday, they were 15 months. No, it was today. Is it today? Is today the second? No, it's the third. Yesterday they were 15 months old. And they have both eaten water monitors. They're a great favourite, well, more its cousin, the rock monitor, a huge favourite of the Marshall eagle, which is the biggest eagle species we get here. And so they eat them. Lions will eat them, crocodiles will eat them. Uh, you'll find, I suppose, there would be any number of birds of prey if they could get them, would eat them. And once they get to this size, they're pretty safe from the attentions of anything but the mammalian predators. And crocodiles, of course. So, I mean, if a hyena could catch one, it would almost certainly eat it as, uh, yeah, like I say, as would a lion. Python also might have a go at them, you know. 
Lauren, I'm not going to be facetious, although it's very tempting with this answer. You say, what's the difference between a water and a rock monitor? <laughs> Uh, the rock monitor has actually got a much heavier head. He looks like he's got a sort of Roman nose. This one's got a very streamlined nose. The rock monitor doesn't. The rock monitor also doesn't have those lovely sort of yellow and golden colours on him. He's a much more uniform, or he's a mottled grey colour, but he doesn't have quite the same striking coloration as the water monitor. Then obviously their habitat is different. A rock monitor can go in the water if it wants to, but it will normally be in tree holes, sitting on trees in this area, yes, sometimes on rocks, but this chap will always be around water. The rock monitor's potentially, I believe, slightly larger as well, but they, I mean, you wouldn't notice a difference in size. Now you can see that this chap's got a very pointed head and the rock monitor's got a much more rounded sort of Roman snout. You can see his ears there listening, of course. He does have nostrils, but though their function will largely be performed by his forked tongue, of course. I thought he was going to climb all the way up, but I think maybe that tree's just a little bit spiky on his belly. Oh, and look at the water lily in the background there. Sorry, last, last zoom in there, if you wouldn't mind, Senzor. Can you see the beautiful blue water lily just to the top left-hand side there? Gorgeous. Very nice. Nymphia species. Hmm. Well, that's going to be the last that you see of me today, let's head across to Byron to close the show with a beautiful giraffe. Thank you very much, 